It's my pleasure now to invite our second speaker, Mr. Hugh Davis, who is the deputy head of the UK delegation. Thank you. Many thanks. Um, I'm stepping in at the last minute for our head of delegation, Archie Young, and, and I must admit, when I saw that Peru was speaking before me, I was very worried. That was, like, that was a great speech, and it's good to, have, to be here today as part of the Plastic Building Day. It's a hugely important issue to all of us, and you don't need me telling that. Um, as part of my team, I oversee a programme which uh, has 15.8 million to build capacity for, for negotiators, and that's a specific area that we, we, we focus on. Um, but as the UK government more broadly, we recognise this support to help build capacity is vital if we're going to achieve the aims of the Paris Agreement. And as Guru said, we need leaders in this space, so I'm pretty pleased to say that we're able to support this uh, initiative today. We're keen to listen to countries which require support and understand capacity needs, and to link the multilateral framework provided by the UNFCCC with real-world action. Um, as Guru said, it's not just about the negotiations here, it's about what we're, what we're actually doing in countries and, and building on the capacity that, that's already there. Um, we want to hear this, learn lessons from other projects and programmes, what went well and what could go better, to continue to learn and build our knowledge and to understand and ensure that the support we provide is, is as effective as possible. For us, building capacity is not just about for those who receive support, it's also for those who are providing the support as well. Um, we need to learn from each other uh, in how we make that as effective as possible. Um, and once we've learned those lessons, we want to share our experiences and our knowledge and expertise too. So that's why it's so important to have spaces like this one for us to come together and talk about capacity building, to hear different perspectives, uh, different experiences, and to build our collective understanding of, of what's needed and what we can all provide. Um, this is also why we held two events last week at the UK Pavilion, um, one on enhancing the role of academia and improving knowledge sharing. Um, we've obviously got a huge um, history in academia in the UK that we hope that we can we can build on and we can use in this particular space to, to help provide um, further lessons on, on, on capacity building. Um, and we also run specific um, sessions on transparency as well. Uh, and we also have specific programs on uh, climate finance. Um, this is an area where we really sort of listen down for what could be help, helping different uh, countries. And the, um, uh, the Climate Finance Accelerator program is something that we've been testing with a number of countries. We've found a lot of success there. And we hope we've got a lot of specific lessons that we can, we can share with other countries. Um, the theme of today, though, is, is strengthening national capacity to implement low emission and climate resilient development strategies. Um, and this is an area where we've been working a lot with different countries in the space, um, building on our experience. We've, we've had the Climate Change Act and carbon budgets in the UK for 10 years now. Um, we've set five different carbon budgets. We've had to go through that <coughs> process of introducing legislation, making mistakes and learning from it. Um, and some of the lessons that we've learned, we've been trying to put into programs like our 2050 calculator, uh, where we've developed tools to help us project our mission, to project the pathways that we need to take. Um, and that's something that we've been able to share so far with, with 10, 10 other countries um, to develop their own calculators, and, and we've just um, secured funding to, to roll this out to another five countries as well. So uh, it's another area that we can, we can all learn from. Um, another program that we've just launched uh, is, uh, is called PACT. We like our acronyms that you can say, and that's on partnering to accelerate climate transitions. Uh, it's a 60 million pound program designed to provide demand-led technical assistance to improve capacity of key public, private, and civil society institutions. So we do really hope that that could be a key part of the package that we're seeing being offered um, at the moment, and particularly different initiatives that are being launched uh, here at, at, at COP. Um, the first six million has been brought forward for activities in Mexico, Colombia and China, uh, including sharing expertise on, on climate legislation, as I mentioned before. Um, it's all been designed around principles of being country-led, conversations to start off the programmes, not just assumptions that we make back, here, back in our capital. Um, and continuing to have this conversation, continuing to come to these negotiations, listening to the sessions, but listening to the, to the events like this, with what helps to inform uh, our particular activities, um, such as low emission and climate strategies in cities, local government and communities. This is an area which we know is particularly important. That we, a lot of work can be done below the national level um, to reduce emissions, and that will become more and more important as we all continue to take climate action um, to meet the long-term goals of the, private, uh, of the Paris Agreement. Um, one specific programme we have delivering on that is the Cities Programme, that's 27.5 million 
5 million technical assistance and advocacy uh, in 15 mega cities uh, around Asia and South America to help develop ambitious climate plans in, in those areas and to deliver them as well. Um, I hope what I've been describing doesn't sound too much like an advert for what the UK is providing. Um, what I like to think of it more as is, is a menu. Um, if we don't know what's out there, then we can't draw from it, we can't benefit from it. And in this context as well, we, we can't learn from it. Um, so I hope that by sort of shining the spotlight on those areas where we have been doing more work, where we've learned more lessons, and we can carry on this conversation uh, after today, um, that I hope that that's been uh, useful for you and uh, as the whole of today and the whole of the capacity building event throughout COP have been an invaluable space for us to learn from uh, over the course of the last two weeks. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you.